jamming with my man Terry Burrell. Um, just having some fun in 7 4 time. Um, bass part that I came up with, and I was just thinking about a drum groove to play in 7. Um, and Terry and I would get together every now and then and just have some fun playing drums and bass because it's so important to do that. You know, if you're going to play in a band, if you're going to play with other musicians, you have to be able to have a level of trust with the musicians you're working with. If you're a drummer, you have that relationship with the bass player, man. And Terry and I play a bunch of different things. You can see the acoustic bass in the picture. We were just working out on swinging a little bit a little while ago. But uh, uh, he and I were talking earlier about, you know, I, I was sharing with him about my thoughts and philosophies on how I utilize the drum kit in playing with the instrument, playing with the bass. I listen very carefully since <laughs> I write a lot of most of these bass lines, so I know them, you know, personally. I, I, I orchestrate my drum parts in how the bass line is moving. Like I pay attention to the registers of the instrument. You can see, you know, he has on the neck of the instrument an array of different tonal pitches and, and octaves to use. Um, and I kind of approach the drums the same way. I listen to like when he's playing down in the lower register so I have more bass drum activity that would happen then if he's playing up in the mid to upper register of the instrument. I might be thinking more snare drum, more rim shot, uh, higher pitch toms. So it's really, it truly is about orchestrating the drum part and, and seeing what you can come up with. Um, so I try to match tonally what, you know, the timbers and stuff like that, what, what's happening, you know, and what, what range of the instrument he's playing in or on and I, I, I bring the drums to that and uh, and then what we try to do once we intellectualize what we're going to be playing we know we're going to be playing in seven we know how the bass line is written I have an idea of, of how what kind of drum thing I want to play now this is the first time we're playing this too so I'm leaving the mistakes in here <laughs> um, all these other things you know that that we go through the human part of making music and these are just bass lines I wrote so, so he and I can practice different variations of, of rhythms and uh, concepts and feels. And it's all about establishing our relationship and grounding our relationship even more. And it's hard to believe that that could even be possible because we've been playing together about 18 or so years. But it's, it's proof that developing and getting good is a lifetime study. You have to put in the time in some capacity, either listening to music or practicing on hands with your instrument every day. You know, you have to keep your chops up. You have to, uh, that's if you're serious about the process, man. If you just want to play a gig in a bar somewhere, make 50 bucks, hey, that's, if that's what you want, cool, fine. If you have bigger aspirations for yourself, then you're going to have to really put in a lot. I mean, a lot. Of work it takes a lot of work to get good on these instruments on any instrument and so you know that's just sharing a little bit of, of my philosophy on on uh, working with uh, the bass player from a drumming perspective and and how I think about approaching writing bass lines I like to hear bass players use different registers of the instrument um, I like a bass player that can play in odd meters comfortably, and Terry can, of course, because his great work with Steve Coleman. You, know, you can't play with Steve Coleman uh, if you can't play odd meters, you know. And it's not just odd meters, man. I mean, it's 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 mixed meters. You might have a bar of five, and then a bar of seven, and then a bar of three, and then a bar of two. So it's not just about playing 7-4 all the way through or 5-4 all the way through. You have to be able to, to make these rhythmic adjustments. And Terry's this kind of bass player, man. Plus, he has a great swing beat on the, on the acoustic bass. Um, he comes from an electric bass background, but he's also very versatile on, on the acoustic bass. And so sometimes we just work out swinging, man. Just, just, just swing a little bit and have fun. But... I love getting with him on the electric bass because I like playing some funk, some pocket, 
uh, some groove stuff too. And, you know, we, we practice so we can develop our trusting relationship, develop our time, develop our feel and how we make the music feel, and then our dynamic ranges. We always have to get play in a way where we leave ourselves room for some place to go. Because if we start off, I start out just bashing right out of the gate, where am I going to go? You know, if Terry starts out you know, right, right out of the gate, where's he going to go? But down, we go down if we, if we did that. So watch your dynamic ranges, watch your, 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 your pacing and development. You know, think motif development, thematic, like I'm playing rhythms off the theme of what he's playing, the melodic, you know, melodically and rhythmically. There's a lot of stuff that goes into this process, man. And it's not just about getting up and being cool and playing licks. You gotta really listen to each other. We listen to each other and we feed off each other because it really, in this case, it really is a dialogue. It's a type of language we're speaking. And <clears throat> if we can't get that language together, man, it's not going to happen. So uh, hope you uh, got a little bit out of this, this little brief bit of fun video clip here with Terry Burrell. And uh, we're going to take it out on that 7-4 that band. Uh, go ahead, hit me up, Terry. Ha, ha, ha.